Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HBC. We're here at ISC 2018 in Frankfurt, Germany. And today I'm with Englin Go from HPE. Englin, you know, we've done a series of these uh, fireside chats over the years. And I wanted to ask you this year at ISC, what's new in terms of AI? Hmm. What's new is that uh, we're starting to see um, AI and especially machine learning coming into the HPC world. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the traditional um, HPC applications, uh, most of them have been in the simulation top-down way, where the scientist, engineer, or the financial analyst would first build their models, uh, you know, based on physics, based on math, uh, and after which, the m after the models are built, you would send in your initial condition to make a prediction. Mm -hmm. So that's the top-down way. And we've lived this way for decades, right? Uh, then, uh, more recently, right, uh, a, a new way has emerged to supplement the traditional top-down way. And I call it the bottom-up way, where uh, what you do is instead of building the model, you take historical data, feed it into uh, the, the program, and you give the program, instead of a model, self-adjustable dials, mm. many of them. And with each new piece of historical data, you feed it bottom up, the dials get adjusted a little bit. After 10, 100, 1,000, even hundreds of thousands of uh, examples and of historical records, the dials get adjusted so many times that they settle onto a set of settings that predict very well. So I call this the bottom up way, the machine learning way and machine learns to be artificially intelligent. So this new way uh, has emerged, uh, and, and I'm starting to see many uh, HPC application uh, starting to incorporate this bottom-up way into their top-down way too. So the simulation doesn't go away, it gets augmented with these new techniques? That's a very important point, Rich. Yeah. Uh, the gold standard still has to be simulation <laughs> based on physics, right? Uh, because those laws in physics have been proven true uh, and we rely on them for decades, yeah. However, um, these top-down way where uh, we scientists, or the scientists and engineers and financial analysts, where we need them to create the model, the model is only as good as the things that the creators yeah, have anticipated. You know, there are things that we, we can't anticipate. And as such, these models uh, sometimes uh, don't work very well, or they don't work all the time. Yeah. Uh, however, the alternative, which is, uh, I wouldn't say the alternative, the supplementary method, the bottom-up way, um, is based on historical data, and therefore it has uh, all of history uh, in it, right? And as such, uh, there are things that it could uh, include and anticipate that models uh, probably can't, yeah. That's why these two work together very well, yeah. yeah. So okay, England, then why now is the question, I guess. Why mm. now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good question, you know. Um, we've, we've lived the top-down way all these decades, right? And uh, and now, in the recent years, we're starting to see the proliferation of the addition of this bottom-up way, the machine learning way. Why now? Well, for a start, I think uh, compute power got to a point that it was cheap enough, right? Uh, abundant and, and low cost enough mm -hmm. uh, for you to use the uh, deep neural met method way, right? And that was one of the ways you could do machine learning. And those methods were well invested in by the internet companies to do uh, image classification, to do speech recognition. Uh, and, and with this investment, plus the fact that compute power is low cost enough for people to use it, right? In the past, it was impractical, given the compute power. Is that the time, time to solution would just be too long or too expensive? Yes, it was too long uh, and or too expensive, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, the simulation way was, e even though long, was still faster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. If you could do the real thing faster, then you could. <laughs> That's right. If you could do the goal, goal standard faster, then you could do the uh, approximate but uh, history-based method. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
wh why would you do that, right? But the, <laughs> but the deep neural methods uh, started to get uh, uh, well invested in for the start, right? The internet companies wanted uh, uh, those, needed those methods for their own purposes. Uh, for example, image classification in YouTube or, or speech recognition in, um, uh, in, in Skype, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. right? A or optimization in game theory. So with all this huge uh, investment in, in it, uh, in, in these three, particularly these, these three areas, plus you know um, the fact that compute power got to a point that uh, you could do these deep neural networks uh, at lower cost way, uh, and uh, and of course uh, the invention with the investment of back propagation to to get to a solution with deep neural network faster. Uh, these came all together in the last few years, uh, becoming a practical way to supplement simulation, the top-down way. So the bottom-up way supplementing the top-down. Yeah. Well, I mean, I really enjoy these chats, and I'm hoping we can get one in Dallas in November, and so I can catch up. Absolutely, absolutely, be, be great to meet you regularly, huh, Rich? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah. We'll see you thank next you. time. Yeah. Thanks, Rich.